which is impacted today, which they acknowledge is impacted today by the disgraceful actions. And let me tell you how significant that is. Akwaba, Ababa, Rima, I greet you in the name of our glorious and courageous ancestors, those near and those far, requesting respectfully that they render mercy and bear witness to our words and deeds this emancipation morning. A happy, reflective, and introspective emancipation to all. All members of the national community, all members of the regional community, and all members of the international community, happy emancipation to all. This morning, we are here at this historic site to begin Kambule, the March of Freedom 2023. Let me remind you that it was at this historic site that the then governor, George Fitzgerald Hill, pronounced in 1834 that our enslaved ancestors were both free and unfree. In an amazing piece of double speak, according to Dr. Tony Martin. This set the tone for our enslaved ancestors in the English-speaking colonies to be agitated considerably when they realized that freedom was not going to be immediate, but that they were to continue to serve a further six-year period of apprenticeship, a period referred to by Dr. Tony Martin as a savage interlude. In fact, this intended six-year apprenticeship system lasted for only four years. It was at the end of this four-year savage interlude that our ancestors were deemed free men and free women. This is why we begin the commemoration of the emancipation of our ancestors from the year 1838 and not 1834. As such, this year marks the 185th anniversary of freedom of our ancestors from enslavement in the English-speaking colonies. Undoubtedly, our existence as an African people did not begin in enslavement. So we are here in remembrance of all our ancestors who, according to Professor James Small, left us a legacy of great civilization, a body of literature, both written and oral, as well as the great institutions of philosophy, science, and religion in Kemet, now known as Egypt, Nubia, Ethiopia, West Africa, an area where our royal majesty and his ensemblant came from. Zimbabwe and South Africa, just to name a few. In addition, we are here to remember and pay our respects and appreciation to our ancestors who survived the disruption of their communities and the eruption of their lifeline on the African continent. Further, we remember those who suffered 
and those who survived the horror of the Middle Passage, and all those who survived the indignities and injustices experienced on the chattel slave enslavement in the Americas. Therefore, we remember their strength, their courage, and their resilience in staying the course that was traumatic and humiliating, but survive so that their sons and daughters can live in a world they are helping to reshape amidst the many challenges. Today, we also show our gratitude to the multitudes who, despite their enslavement and their consequential psychological pains, gave humanity many discoveries, inventions that aid in the further enhancement and development of human civilization. Now, African conception teaches us that as we remember our ancestors through the libation we are about to pour, what in fact we are doing is keeping them alive, thus energizing our national and international communities positively. The libation energizes the ancestors and they, in turn, energize us. Since they are responsible for the gifts and the talents and the achievements of our people. As we pour this libation, we acknowledge our ancestors for giving us life and for being a source of inspiration. And the energy transfer in this process build the consciousness of our being. This consciousness will liberate the mind and empower us in efforts to continue the growth and development of our community, thus confronting the many contemporary challenges we face as a people, now and in the future, with dignity and courage. Hence, the occasion we commemorate brings a joy to our hearts and a smile to our faces, according to Frederick Douglass. Indeed, today we are overjoyed to have among us, for this year's commemoration, the Asante Hene. His Royal Majesty, the Ashanti King Utufu Osei Tutu II, and his ensemble. The Asante Hene has come from one of the many doors of no return along the west coast of Africa. To be specific, the door of no return in Ghana, where many of our ancestors were shipped in chains to make that horrendous middle passage journey to the Americas. Clearly, as a result of this experience, the African continent was the victim of imperial exploitation and slavery and suffered a massive loss in human population, according to J.P. Patterson, former Prime Minister of Jamaica. P.J. Patterson further implores us to be aware of those who would like to place the guilt of the crime of enslavement on the shoulders of the victim. And we must be careful of that. Nonetheless, the efforts of our ancestors have lit the pathways for those of us who have since come into this world and continue to be a light to our contemporary efforts. To join me as we welcome 
with our hearts, our spirits, and our voices, our King, Otumfo Osei Tutu II, the Asante Hini to Trinidad and Tobago. Send a special good morning to our Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Rowley, Keith Rowley, yes. And Mrs. Rowley, welcome. To our Line Minister of, our Line Minister of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts, the Honorable Randall Mitchell, welcome, Minister. And to all the other ministers who are here with us, all our special guests, all the chiefs, the entire entourage, the dancers, the drummers, all of those who have come here to celebrate this 185th anniversary of emancipation in Trinidad and Tobago. And when I look upon you, you always make me want to sing. And my voice is saying, Hello, the more what the freedom morning come. What we say, Amber Tyler. Yes, the freedom morning come. Oh, freedom morning come, Tyler. That's how our ancestors would have felt many, many years ago. And it is that inspired display that we call freedom morning come every year. You all know I'm not a good singer, so forgive, forget that part. Right, but I just want to say welcome. I don't want to be for a long conversation at this time. I know you've been standing in the sun for a while, but your spirits and your energy are so powerful and I thank you this morning for your being your beautiful selves, your regal selves, your powerful selves because you can feel the energy and that's what is most beautiful about emancipation morning and with our diaspora energy and this energy that we are also feeling from the continent I know that we know who we are this morning and who are we? Africans, who are we? Africans, who are we? Africans, power to you, my brothers and sisters. Ashi. Minister of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts. Let's welcome him with a lusty round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 185 years ago on this day, one of the darkest chapters in our collective past came to an end. The occasion of the emancipation of African enslaved people in the British colonies. Today, as we gather on this auspicious celebration of Emancipation Day, I stand before you as Minister of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts with a heart full of gratitude. We commemorate the resilience and strength of our ancestors who fought tirelessly for freedom and dignity. It is a day of remembrance and reflection, a day that holds deep significance in shaping the tapestry of our nation. So today, I too am pleased to welcome His Royal Majesty, who is present with us to share in our celebration of freedom and growth as a people. As the Minister with Responsibility for Culture, I wish to emphasize the crucial role that our cultural heritage plays in shaping our national identity. Our cultural heritage is the bedrock of our identity. Emancipation Day also provides us with the opportunity to demonstrate our cultural tourism offerings, which has the power to invigorate local communities, boost small businesses, and generate employment opportunities. It is a catalyst for showcasing our vibrant culture and heritage to the world. And we will continue to promote the unique cultural offerings of Trinidad and Tobago. In celebrating the 185th anniversary of the emancipation of our ancestors, we must now recognize that freedom is not just about physical bonds that have been broken. It is about fostering an environment that enables all citizens to thrive and to create opportunities for our citizens to achieve our fullest potential. Although today marks the close of this year's Pan-African Festival, the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts will continue to be a proud supporter of this initiative. We commend the work of the Emancipation Support Committee as you seek to bring this festival to global audiences and invite the world to pay homage to our African identity, history, and legacy. 
the ministry remains committed to investing in our culture and the cultural development of all our art forms. This festival continues to be a catalyst for the tourism and cultural industries, as well as a platform for African stories to be elevated to prominence, for African artists and entrepreneurs to gain exposure, and for the young to be educated in our history. And what it is not for the reward of our ancestors, the freedom we have to grow and to build, to achieve and to inspire, the freedom to heal and to hope for a brighter future. May we all continue to live free and to our fullest potential. Happy emancipation to all Trinidad and Tobago. In this country, we want to be our best selves in this moment. I want us to welcome to the podium the... Let me get this protocol. You can't miss this protocol. Dr. the Honorable Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Ministers of Government, Paramount Chiefs of the Ashanti Kingdom, Queen Mothers of the Ashanti Kingdom, Ms. Zakia Uzuma Wadada, Chairman of the Emancipation Support Committee, Members of Parliament, Members of the Emancipation Support Committee all, brothers and sisters, welcome to our emancipation celebrations. This is a welcome to our long lost family. I speak of loss because it was a loss calculated over centuries. It was one that forcefully sent millions of African people to this side of the globe with the vast waters of the Atlantic separating us, disconnecting us from our African ancestry. For us, the concept of history was Europe's. History was theirs, and it was ours. We were told and taught for many years that Africa was a dark continent. Its people primitive, for some even subhuman. Its civilization also dark, foreign, and in many references, it did not even exist. In the eyes of some, even today, the melanin in our skin condemned us to derision and discrimination. So generations of the enslaved on this side of the Atlantic grew up knowing little or nothing of Africa's history. The diversity and greatness of its peoples, its ethnicities, its empires, their wars of resistance to European domination and of Africa's contribution to world civilization. Worst of all, on this side, we never truly enjoyed the genuine bonds of our blood and family relations with Africa. So today is indeed a significant day. It is significant to our citizens of African descent and particularly to our younger generation, many of whom are witnessing and discovering for the first time the presence, stature, and majesty of African royalty in our midst. Hopefully, from today, the word there, which implies something foreign, other, or of distant ownership, will be changed, and we will begin to share and embrace every aspect of both our lives as ours, meaning 
that on both sides of the Atlantic, African people will see the oneness that we carry within us. Then we will be separated only by the narrowing of the Atlantic Ocean. Your Royal Highness, we in Trinidad and Tobago are indeed appreciative of this visit, and particularly at this time, as we commemorate the emancipation from African enslavement in 1838. Historians on both sides of the Atlantic have written volumes on the torturous experiences of our ancestors, who in some parts of the Americas were equated with animals in the fields to be flogged, bought and sold, and the idea of family was erased with extreme brutality. Enslavement over some 400 years meant not only dawn to dust work in the fields, but a destruction of all of the enslaved's cultural support. His or her personhood, their family systems, religion, music, art, culture, language, this being our lot, the concepts of ownership, asset, and wealth were clearly not meant for us, according to them. One historian describes us, the descendants of the enslaved, as victims of an African cultural holocaust. Another historian suggests that there should be a middle passage plan for Africans with Europe giving reparations to areas of the diaspora, similar to the reconstruction designs of the Marshall Plan, which was effected after World War II. You will no doubt be familiar with the continuing efforts and appeals in this area to the former European colonizers. Some, the direct beneficiaries of this Holocaust, prefer to write new revisionist history to pretend that it didn't happen. Some pats us on the shoulder to say to us, let's just move on. It couldn't have been all that bad. And most recently, bold-faced morons are now even suggesting that we should be grateful for, according to them, benefits that were bestowed, unquote, upon us by slavery through language and a culturization. But in spite of Europe's calculated attempts at dehumanizing us, there was always resistance. As C.L.R. James, one of Trinidad and Tobago's foremost liter literary figures concluded, African slaves fought back powerfully with the contents of their minds, the memories, the logic, and the resilience of the people. I speak proudly today that what CLR James identified some 80 odd years ago continue to be realized in the contributions of citizens of Trinidad and Tobago to the world stage. For example, we have created and given the world our steel pan, our calypso, our soca music. We have gone on to influence musical forms even in Africa. We have done so, creating the world's first gas-based economy, developed innovations in the oil industry, established the world-class Point Lisa's industrial estate. We can cite our achievements in sport, literature, education, and many other fields, with our scholars occupying major positions at many locations around the world. We are also proud that after serving on the United Nations Security Council at an earlier time, this September, our country will assume the presidency of the United Nations General Assembly. We in Trinidad and Tobago have not been that distant 
to not have observed and pay homage to you, your royal majesty. We have recognized your personal background, your preparatory early work, life and training in the United Kingdom and Canada, and we acknowledge your achievements, particularly your Pillar of Peace Award for the settlement of differences between two royal families, and of course, your chancellorship of the Kwame Ontario University of Science and Technology. I should note here today that the founding father of Trinidad and Tobago, first premier and first prime minister, Dr. the Honorable Eric Eustace Williams, a colossal figure in the decolonization period of the 1950s and 60s, was a close friend and fellow traveler of your president, Kwame Ewe. This too can be said of CLR James, who I mentioned earlier, and also George Padmore, another distinguished son of this soil and a guide to Ghana's independence. He was certainly one of the significant figures in the early Pan-African movement in London. We are proud to acknowledge and understand that Padmore's name continues to be treated with its much-deserved respect in Ghana. The existence and featuring of the George Padmore Library in Accra is testimony of our long and trusted bonds. On behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, I had the opportunity to kneel and plant a tree in the yard of that library. I am told that it is glowing gloriously and beautifully. I admit that I am personally interested in this aspect with the hope that along with the commercial prospects and the hydrocarbon business that have been discussed earlier between our people and our governments, there could be some measure of continuous collaboration and exchange between your university and our University of the West Indies and the University of Trinidad and Tobago. As both our regions continue to focus on the advancing technologies and other disciplines as we travel into the 21st century. Your Royal Highness, again, on behalf of all the people of Trinidad and Tobago, particularly on behalf of the African people of Trinidad and Tobago, welcome to Trinidad and Tobago and our Emancipation Day 2023. I thank you for your visit and I trust that you will enjoy your stay. Welcome and thank you.
Thank <laughs> you. 